having runaway rent inflation, although it looks good on the surface, I think there's a lot of harm that it can do long term. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I am doing awesome. How are you doing, Todd? I am excellent, man. Um, just, uh, just Boston really hard trying to find some properties and uh, can just continue on down the road. Actually, right now I'm looking at, okay, how do I maximize my time? Because we've actually got more properties uh, than what we usually have uh, that will be closing. So I've got a lot of deals and I'm going, okay, I want to make sure we can get the money for these deals, right? So looking at, okay, how do I maximize my time? How do I grow that network and continue to be able to expand? There's always that ebb and flow. I tell people all the time, you're either going to have too many deals or you're going to have too much money. It's one or the other. The goal is to try to get those as close as possible to each other. I think we're pretty good. We'll see. Um, but I always, you know, just want to continue to grow both sides. Yep, that's fair. And uh, too many deals is not like a bad problem to have. Not a bad problem to have, especially uh, in a market where deals are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely a good problem to have a lot of deals. But, you know, I know that it'll shift with this market. Unless this market shifts and, and all of a sudden becomes soft, then I will have a lot of deals. But I know it'll shift back to where I'm like scrounging just to find a deal. Um, so you got to keep on pushing and, and actually this is a, this is an important thing for people to know is when you have a lot of deals coming in and you get deals under contract and maybe you're like, wow, you know, I'm really good for now. We don't need to continue to search for deals. That's the wrong way to look at it. In my opinion, you get, we got, we got to keep on looking at deals. We got to keep on building relationships with brokers. We got to look at the deals they send to us, take them very seriously, underwrite them, um, because I can always, in my opinion right now, at least where I am in my network and what I've done, I can always find somebody to buy that deal and take some sort of, get some sort of value from that partnership with um, whatever it might be. So I want to keep on working with brokers. I want to keep that pipeline moving because once I stop that pipeline, it's just, you know, it's just like stopping that train, right? Once you stop the train, it takes a while to start it back up. So the wrong thing is to go, wow, I got a lot of deals. I'm just going to slow down on my deal flow. We're going to focus on just closing these deals and then we'll start it back up. Well, guess what? It's going to take a while to start that back up. So I want to just continue to press forward and just do everything that I've been doing to get these deals. I want to continue to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, persistence is key. The vast majority of deals you look at are going to be crap anyway. So you just have to continue to go through the numbers. If you don't go through the numbers, you're not going to get any deals. Yeah. And it helps me understand what's happening in the market too. Like if I take my, my mind off of looking at the deals that are coming, then I'm not seeing what's happening in the market for an extended period of time. And these multifamily deals take a while, you know, so we get an LOI accepted it takes anywhere between two to five weeks, depending on the seller, to get the actual purchase and sale agreement back, maybe even longer. I mean, I've had it take two months before to get this purchase sale agreement. And then we close 90 days after that. So you think about if you got three months to close and if you've got a slow seller, you've got two months to get the purchase sale agreement. You've negotiated the LOI, you put your offer in. That was probably uh, at least two weeks. So now I've got five and a half months. Uh, and that's kind of an extended. So it's a, a lot of times it's faster, but potentially up to six months that I'm working on this one deal until I actually get it closed. So if, I, if over a six month period of time, I'm not actually looking for actively looking for deals, I've taken my head out of the market for six months. Uh, I, 
I have to not like I have to relearn everything, but I have to get back and go, okay, where, where are things at right now? What, what's happening? Yeah, there's constantly a little adjustments. Uh, I mean, like lumber just went down in price, uh, but uh, cap rates compress or expand just depending. So you have to pay attention to that. Otherwise you're going to be left behind. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of pay attention, this market is, is just going bonkers as far as rental prices go. I just read Boise, Idaho increased over the last year. The rents increased by 26%. Wow. 26%. There's multiple, multiple cities in the, the double digits that are reaching into that 20 percentile range, um, 15% range. Some of the markets I'm in are in that 15% range uh, where rents are increasing. And then it's odd because there's a few markets that are seeing almost no growth. Um, where you and I live, Minneapolis area is seeing pretty much zero growth. Um, they, they saw an 11% decline in rents and that's bounced back. But if you look at the year over, uh, we've seen pretty much no growth. So uh, interesting to see what's happening around the country. But overall, uh, minus a few markets, New York, San Francisco, Minneapolis, a couple other random markets, um, rents have been increasing drastically. You're talking in almost every market, 5% or greater um, that we're seeing. So now, is that exciting or is that concerning? I think a little bit of both, right? I think it's exciting because, well, any anytime you own rental properties and you see rents going up, I mean, you're, you're excited because you're able to make more money, which means you're able to pay your bills, which means better profits, which means happy investors and the whole, the whole thing. Right. But it's also makes you a little nervous because you go, wow, these rents are going up quickly, but is that sustainable? And the quicker they go up, the faster they could come down. Right. And the more drastic they could come down. And the other thing that happens is if it continues to get out of control, the government's already in our business in the rental real estate they can continue to press in our business even more. And you've got more rent control. You've got just more government intervention that's happening in your properties. And when that happens, it doesn't go away. Now, if the government starts to get into your business, they're going to stay in it. They're not going to just get out of it. Right. So we don't, Having runaway rent inflation, although it looks good on the surface, I think there's a lot of harm that it can do long term. So we we want to be too ex don't don't want to get too excited about about this. But hey, real quick, I want to talk to you about the North Star Real Estate Conference. We've got the North Star Real Estate Conference. It's a third annual. Of course, we're back live this year after taking a one year hiatus and being virtual. We're live. We've got live and virtual options for you. So I'd love to see you there. North Star Real Estate Conference. It's all about cash flowing real estate. So we're going to be hitting on multifamily. We're going to be hitting on all things commercial. Uh, we'll be talking about syndications, asset management, all of that stuff that you're going to need to know and the mindset behind it. We've got great lineup of speakers. So go on to northstarunlimited.live, buy your tickets now. Um, I want to see you there. I want to network with you. I want to shake your hand. I want to get to know you. And we've got a ton of people that are going to be there wanting to do the same thing. So join us, North Star Real Estate Conference, October 7th and 8th. Uh, and it is in the Twin Cities at Mystic Lake Casino. So I hope to see you there. I think also the difficulty of entry to be able to buy a single family home is a big factor too, because if it's uh, affordable for people to buy a single family home themselves, instead of just paying rent, then they're going to do that uh, most likely. But uh, yeah, yep. so if rents keep on going sky high, but uh, like the single family market is starting to level off a little bit or, or cool down at least a little bit right now. Uh, who knows what, what that'll be like in the next coming months, but uh, um, so I don't know if people are going to start moving into houses more.
Yeah, I think that'll happen, especially if rents continue to go up at a drastic level. That That's the other thing, and people get excited. Oh, rents are going up. Look at what's happening. We withstood this recession. I told you multifamily is bulletproof. And then what's going to happen is that we get over-exuberant. We take our eye off the ball, and all of a sudden, people are starting to buy houses and move out of our properties. And, and, and that's a slow bleed, right? It doesn't, it's not like you're going to have this max ex, exodus overnight, but all of a sudden your occupancy goes from 96% down to 95, down to 94, down to 93, down to 92. And all of a sudden, before you really realize what's happening, you open your eyes up and your occupancy is at 80 88, 89, 90%, you're not cash flowing as well anymore. Even though your rents are really high, you're giving concessions and you're going, uh oh, what's going on? You know, and so you got to keep your eye on the ball and understand what's going on and not get too excited about rental rates rising because what goes up oftentimes comes down. So, I'm being cautiously optimistic about what's happening. I think um, rental properties are a great place to be, but at the same time, we're being very cautious with how we're projecting and looking at the future. Yep, you gotta conservatively underwrite. Uh, you know, the market could turn at any time, and if you're underwriting with the expectation that it's going to keep on going up and you're going to get a 26 percent uh, rent increase year after year you're probably not uh, going to buy at the right price uh, because if things go down again, you're going to get screwed if you're not planned ahead. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, you know, and there's a couple, there's a couple things that you, you got to look at. So, well, first of all, one of the, one of the things I was reading about and it makes a lot of sense is that these eviction moratoriums have actually been really bad for renters overall. And of course they've been not that great for landlords either. Right. So there's the, the landlords, the downfall, you know, the, the negatives are pretty easy to, to look at and see and understand. Right. They're not, they're not they're not able to evict tenants that aren't paying. So they have to keep the tenants that aren't paying. But same time, they're bad for the tenants because we can't we, we don't have the move outs. So nobody's moving. Um, there's there there's this. Lack of inventory. And this like just clog in the system, basically. And so, and, and you've now you've got the government paying those rents. And so what you've got is lack of affordable housing everywhere. Big time, more than we've ever seen. And, and that's caused by this eviction moratorium, right? So we, we've got this kind of this block in the system that's happening right now. And Landlords can raise their rents and they have to raise their rents, right? Because they haven't gotten paid. So now they're trying to make up for some of the downfall that they've had over the past year. Um, you know, and, but one of the things that I think could help sustain this market, Matt, when we look at, okay, how sustainable is this? And, and 23%, 26%, that's not sustainable, right? But is, is 3%, is 5% sustainable? Well, what is going on with inflation? You know, I was at my in-laws this weekend and um, my sister-in-law works at a restaurant. Her boyfriend works at a restaurant and we were talking with them and her boyfriend kind of runs a lot of stuff. And, and he's like, look, I got these young kids, first job, second job, and we're paying them like 20 bucks an hour to come in and do a job that we would have normally paid in normal times. We would have paid them eight bucks an hour. And now we're paying them 20, 25 bucks an hour. And he's like, they, they're demanding raises right away. And they're sitting around and they're doing nothing. He's like, this is the market we're dealing with right now. And that tells you, well, those, those people for, first of all, those are likely our, our, some of our, some of our tenants, not all, but some of our tenants, and they're able to afford a lot more because they're making 20 bucks an hour when they would have been making $8, $10 an hour, $15 maybe. And now they're making 20, 25. And so we've got this big inflation that's happened, especially at the bottom of the market. 
we've got this big inflation. Where we've seen a lot of inflation has been in, in, in incomes is at the very bottom of the market and the very top, right? So you're seeing very wealthy people get even wealthier. You're seeing the poor or poorer people get wealthier. You're seeing the middle class squeeze. And that's typically what happens, right? The middle class gets squeezed, the wealthy, the rich get richer, and the poor get a boost as well. And that's what we're seeing right now. And we're seeing that big time with wages. And what do you think will happen in the future with the feds uh, and the interest rate? I mean, hard to say, but they, I mean, right now, all indications say 2023. We're going to have interest rates stay where they're at until 2023. That's all indications right now. I find it hard to believe if we continue to see inflation at, you know, four or 5%, but or greater, but we'll see. I mean, like I said, they, they just came out the other day and said that it's going to be 2023 before we see a change in interest rates. So, um, you know, that plays into what we do. We can get these loans for very cheap. I just got a quote on a bridge loan. 80% loan to value, 80% of purchase, 100% of renovation. 3%. For a bridge loan? For a wow. bridge loan. Oh my gosh. Right? That same loan would have been 5 to 7% just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're seeing crazy terms in the market happen right now. People are competing for deals and they're giving amazing terms. And that's part of why people can pay higher prices for properties right now too. When you look at your monthly mortgage payment and you say, wow, you know, we, we look at, for me, especially like, I think a lot of people are, are so, they're, they look at so much at their loan to value. And I look at my loan to value too. Don't get me wrong. But we look at, I look at debt service coverage ratio. And I want my debt service coverage ratio to be 1.5 times or greater. So that means that my income, right, that I got coming in, my net income after all expenses is 1.5 times greater than my mortgage payment. Okay. So if it was a if it was a debt service coverage ratio of two, right, my income would be a hundred thousand dollars a year. My mortgage payment would be fifty thousand dollars a year, right? So I'm looking for one point five, and I don't care as much about my loan to value. No, I still do look at loan to value, um, but if interest rates are lower, that makes it easier to hit that one point five. So if I got five percent interest. You know, now all of a sudden my payments at 75 grand. Now I got to get to NOI of, of 150. But if my interest rate's at 3%, man, I'm only paying 50 grand a year. I only have to be at $100,000 of income, right? And so you can pay a little bit more. Now it's dangerous if we're looking at short-term debt. But if we're looking at long-term fixed debt, you can... You can truly make a lot of money up on a low, cheap mortgage. Yep. Yeah, it's a uh, it's interesting it's interesting times, and it'll be interesting to see how long this lasts. What's really interesting? What's going to happen next? Um, that's what's really interesting to me. I just I actually just had one of my investors. We were texting back and forth, and he made some comment about. Um, you know, a recession. And I'm like, yeah, the next recession that happens, that's when I'm going to see massive growth in my business. Um, not that I'm just waiting for that to happen. Not that I'm sitting on the sidelines, but it, it, we're in this kind of weird time in my opinion right now. Um, yeah, you've said before. Is right, you'll be okay. Yeah, you've said before, you, you can't time the market. You don't have a crystal ball, but as long as you're buying right, like you'd say, uh, you're going to be okay regardless of what happens. Yeah, I mean, you'll be okay and, and you'll be able to make it through. And 
one of the reasons we are focused a lot on senior housing right now too is a diversification, but B is the market. In my opinion, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a recession essentially in the senior housing market. Um, the, the, I don't, wouldn't call it a bubble cause I don't think it was a bubble, but there's been a kind of a burst it out, you know, in the seams. So you, you've seen this decline in pricing. You, you, you're able to negotiate with the sellers. You're able to get seller finance. You're able to do a lot of things that you wouldn't have been able to do a year and a half ago. Um, but then you look at the demographics, you look at what's coming down the pipeline in the senior housing, you look at the lack of inventory and you say, well, it's a great time. Right. And so that's, we, we've been focusing a lot on that. A lot on, uh, on the growth there, not only for diversification, but because of opportunity. Um, and we're still buying multifamily. We're not, a, we haven't abandoned um, multifamily because I still think it's strong. And, and some of the things we've been talking about with inflation and interest rates, low interest rates and uh, rental prices rising. Um, I think it's going to be a very strong, very profitable market to be in. But I do see more risk today than I saw five years ago. Yeah, that's fair. You know, I'm looking for or volatility really, Matt. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to your uh, workshop that you're going to be putting on on September 16th at noon central time about uh, assisted living and yeah. your experience with that and, and what you're looking to do in the future and how people can get started with that. So if anyone here is uh, interested in joining that free workshop, it's uh, going to be, you can sign up on northstarunlimited.live. Yeah, well, and, and at the conference too, Matt, the, the North Star Real Estate Conference, uh, and I'm sure everybody's heard about that in October 7th and 8th. Um, but at that conference, um, my business partner is going to be there. And we have a property manager that's going to be there as well. And we're going to be just doing like a fireside chat type thing, just talking about the senior housing industry and what's going on. And, and um, you know, how, how do you get involved? How do you get started? That type of stuff. So that should be cool as well. Um, so not only on, what'd you say, next Thursday? Uh, Thursday, September 16th. So two Thursdays. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next, next Thursday. Thursday, September. Yeah. So, or though, I don't even know when this is being released, Matt. So may, maybe it's this Thursday. I think this will be, this is released on September 15th. So basically tomorrow. Go. So uh, this yeah. Thursday. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so, but anyway, so yeah, not only there, but at the North Shore real estate conference, we're going to be both be hitting on it. I think it's a, a, a good topic for a lot of people to learn um, whether you want to passively invest, actively invest, or just kind of learn and see if it's the right, fit for you, uh, you'll, you'll learn a lot. So awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, you know, at the North Star Conference, we're also talking about syndication, we're talking about multifamily, we're, talking, we're hitting on industrial, retail, all kinds of stuff, uh, small multifamily, even some single family rental uh, property. So we'll be, we'll be hitting kind of all the uh, topics on cash flow and real estate there. So, so that'll be good. Um, anything else, Matt? No, that's uh, it for today. So I'm looking forward to our upcoming events. Uh, they're going to be re really excellent to join. So that'll yeah. be good. Excited. All right, man. You have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Hey, you too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. 
Uh, and, and also, look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.